The government has started sending out a second round of stimulus checks. Perhaps you've received yours. I know some of you have, but a lot of people are out there and they're reporting major issues with their payments. They have not gotten them yet. It's one top story on our social media pages. A lot of inquiries about it. Hannah Davis joining us this morning in Fort Worth. Um, there are some things you can do mm -hmm. to make sure you go ahead and at least get the process going to get that stimulus in case something went wrong. Yeah, good morning here. That's our goal this morning is to really help people through these uh, issues that they might be facing and what they can do to make sure they get that money, even though it may not have been as much as they originally wanted. But let's take a look at the issues and what you can do if you are encountering those. Now, lots of people are saying their payment actually went to the wrong account or came in the wrong amount. Some still say they're waiting for anything, but others say it does seem to be working correctly for them. Now, the IRS did relaunch its Get My Payment portal on Monday where people can look up the status of their payment and get updates. Now, to do this, you check the status, this is what you need to do. Go to the portal, enter your social security number, date of birth and street address, and your status should be revealed, whether the check has been sent out or not. You can check once a day as the system is updated every 24 hours. Here's a few other issues that you may want to look out for. According to the IRS's website, your payment information cannot be changed at this point. So if you do not get a payment and you are eligible to receive one, it may be claimed on your 2020 tax return as the recovery rebate credit. Also, some people have reported their second stimulus payment went to their tax preparer instead of their personal account. If you use a third party company to help file your 2019 taxes and get a refund, you may want to reach out to them, but be aware a lot of them are saying that the support lines for the phone calls that are coming in have long, long wait times because a lot of people are encountering that. Now, again, the biggest thing that you can do is really check on that. Go to that payment portal, check every 24 hours and stay on top of it and let us know. Have you gotten your payment? Have you seen any issues? Use the hashtag I am up. We'd love to hear from you guys. Mark, over to you. Folks uh, cannot get that money quickly enough. Thank you, Hannah. OK, time to turn our attention to COVID and the situation in Tarrant County. Uh, nine, COVID-19 deaths so high that there simply is not enough room to keep up. This is a tragedy that far too many families locally and across the country have experienced personally. As we say good morning to Chris Sadegui, who joins us live. This is not just an issue in Tarrant County, Chris. North Texas overall experiencing strains on our hospitals. Yes, Mark, one doctor we spoke to said based on the projections, the situation is becoming dire. When you consider that mobile morgues have been deployed to Fort Worth, perhaps we've already reached that point. The deaths in that county, Tarrant County, now more than 1,500. A Texas Health spokesperson confirmed a refrigerated mobile morgue unit is being sent to Texas Health Fort Worth as hospitalizations have eclipsed 1,400 each of the last two days and the ICU now 98% full. In fact, the Dallas-Fort Worth Hospital Council told us the entire area now has just 46 ICU beds available in the entire area that covers 8 million people. The UT Austin Modeling Consortium says the area will need an additional 100 ICU beds in just the next 10 days after COVID cases saw a 30 to 50% increase in spread after Thanksgiving in Texas. Their models show a similar expected spike from Christmas get togethers that have things looking, as he described, dire. And as hospitals fill up, it's not just a matter of space that they're concerned with, but also staffing with so many patients. These frontline healthcare workers we've talked about for the longest time are overwhelmed. And also think back to that spike we saw back in the summer in July with hospitalizations. This current spike has now doubled that spike last year. Mark, back to you. The number is continuing to go in the wrong direction. Thank you, Chris. It